Hello, and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today, I'll be showing you how to cycle from Tulse Hill in South London to Clapham. This ride takes a little over 15 minutes, and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. By public transport, the same journey takes over half an hour, so it's certainly a lot quicker to get on your bike. If you find this video useful, or you just enjoy watching it, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel, as I try to post new videos just like it every week. I'd also like to say a massive thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to contribute as well, you can find a link in the description below the video. All right, let's get going. So we're starting near Tulse Hill Station on the corner of Liam Vale and Norwood Road, and we're gonna turn right into Palace Road. Liam Vale is a bit on the busy side, so make sure you wait for a gap in the traffic before you turn into Palace Road. For our ride today, we're gonna to be riding entirely in low traffic neighborhoods or LTNs, all of them from the same borough, Lambeth. This route from Tulse Hill to Clapham just opened up in the last couple of weeks when Lambeth put in the Brixton Hill low traffic neighborhood, which I'm gonna show you off later. But we're also gonna be using the Streatham Hill, Tulse Hill, and Ferndale LTNs. If you don't know what a low traffic neighborhood is, it's when transport planners strategically close roads to cars at certain points, either using bollards or just signs saying you can't go this way. The idea is to remove through traffic from basically a wide area that's bounded by main roads where the traffic is supposed to stay if it's passing through the area. But drivers can still access the LTN, they're just not allowed to drive from one end of it to another. In a well-designed scheme, the result is usually really, really low traffic levels on residential streets like the ones that we're riding on today, which makes for really pleasant cycling conditions that pretty much anyone would feel comfortable riding a bike in. And you can achieve that without having to build loads of expensive infrastructure. The LTN that we've started in is the Streatham Hill LTN, and it's a good one. If you know the area well already, then there's a little change coming up, which you might not have spotted. There used to be what's called a fire gate here, preventing access through the road, but it's been replaced by these planters. That was changed just this week, and it was done in order to make it easier to cycle through there, as there wasn't a gap in what was there previously, and you kind of had to squeeze around it. If I had one criticism of the Streatham Hill LTN, it would probably relate to the end of Palace Road, where we started, near Tulse Hill. That bit of the LTN isn't quite watertight, and Palace Road is sometimes used as a cut-through for cars, so an extra filter there wouldn't go amiss. We're now using this shared crossing across Christchurch Road, which is actually also part of the South Circular. The pavement here is a little bit narrow, so if you see any pedestrians there, do make sure you give way to them and just let them have priority. That crossing actually lets us get comfortably into our next low traffic neighbourhood, and that's the Tulse Hill LTN. Crossings like that are really important parts of a good LTN scheme because they allow these little oases of low traffic to connect up with each other across the main roads which go down them. Ideally you'd have protected cycle lanes down each of these main roads and protected junctions but we're not quite there yet in London and protected cycle lanes although they do exist are few and far between especially out of the centre of town. So one thing that local authorities can do relatively inexpensively is to make sure that there are good crossings for people walking and cycling between the LTNs to connect up those very low traffic routes. Now there's a high street coming up here with a fish and chip shop, a cafe, some shops outside it, a salon. I don't think this high street's yet making the most of the really low traffic on Upper Tulse Hill. It would be great to see much wider pavements there, some planting, and you can have a lot more seating outside the cafe and the fish and chip shop. It would make it almost into a little village square. Now we were talking about crossings between LTNs and here's where one's missing. I actually felt relatively comfortable going here between Upper Tulse Hill and Dumbarton Road as there are continuous bus lanes in both directions but a safer crossing with priority for cycling and walking would definitely improve things a lot. I think there are plans to construct a cycle crossing between Holmwood Road and Morrish Road slightly to the south as part of another scheme that the council has so if that goes in possibly next year 
then I would amend this route to cross over Brixton Hill just there. We are now of course in our third LTN of the video and that is the new Brixton Hill low traffic neighbourhood. If you know this area at all then you'll know that Lion Road used to be a massive rat run for drivers cutting through and trying to avoid the lights on the main road. It's now as you can see dead quiet thanks to it being filtered and it's a really nice place to cycle. Strangely I didn't get many people cycling in this video but I can promise you that I have been down here plenty of times and it's actually full of people riding around particularly during the week. Schemes like this are often controversial so I think it's pretty striking that Brixton Hill LTN seems to have gone in with basically no fuss at all. I can't really see much in the way of local opposition around and considering it's less than a month old compliance by motorists also seems to be pretty decent. Often when schemes first go in you see a lot of people just driving through the no entry signs which it does happen a bit here, I have seen it, but certainly not as much as say when I visited new schemes that had gone in in Harringay last year where compliance was pretty much non-existent. This scheme is not just great for cycling but it's also great for people who just live in the houses here and also walking. You can see here that someone's just walking in the road which I think is great because it just shows that the level of traffic is low enough for people to feel comfortable doing that and it's probably not something that you would have seen very much before is more people feeling able just to stroll there. Two changes that I'd like to the Brixton Hill LTN, New Park Road which is a little bit further south wasn't filtered which is a big shame and should change. And the second thing is we need a crossing here to get from Brixton Hill LTN over Acre Lane into our fourth LTN of the day and that's Ferndale Low Traffic Neighbourhood which we've just crossed into now. You can see that I really wasn't kidding at the beginning when I said that we would be almost entirely in low traffic neighbourhoods for this ride. This little section coming up does illustrate one of the disadvantages of using back street routes as opposed to say protected lanes along a main road and that is that we've had to double back on ourselves a little bit as the streets don't line up too well. There is a little bit of wiggling around here and if you find it difficult to follow or to remember which turns to take do remember that you can download a map of the route in the description of the video and you can use that on your phone or whatever app or device that you use when you're cycling. The LTN we're in right now, Ferndale, has actually been rearranged twice since it was introduced in 2020. The latest change was just this year and it added some extra filters with the aim of managing traffic a bit better. There was apparently issues with too much traffic entering the LTN via this road, Ferndale Road, which should be fixed now. Personally I think it's good that the council's willing to monitor the scheme and make changes to it without abandoning the original concept or watering it down. One thing it would be great to see though is this zebra crossing to our right turned into a parallel crossing so that people on bikes could also cross the road safely there. I think I read in a council document a couple of years ago that they were planning that but it doesn't seem to have materialised yet so hopefully that will happen as part of the works to make the scheme permanent. So okay we're here this is Clapham High Street and we made it all the way here pretty much entirely in low traffic neighbourhoods. As I said and as you can see from the map here it does get a little bit wiggly at points and we double back on ourselves a bit but I think that doesn't really matter so much as the journey is still so much quicker than going by public transport. It's about 16 minutes versus sort of half an hour to 40 minutes on the bus. Lambeth is definitely starting to have enough LTNs that you can do journeys like this almost entirely in them and I think this video hopefully should show off the benefits of that approach. Do let me know in the comments what you think of the video, make sure you hit the like button so other people can find it and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and you haven't done so already. Also again massive thank you to everyone who contributes on the Patreon and if anyone else wants to join them there's a link in the description below the video where you can support the channel. Thanks so much and I'll see you guys again next time.